McCarthy reportedly called House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries last night regarding that oh. speakership. And, huh. good for us, Leader Jeffries joins wow. us now. Leader Jeffries, Boom. good morning. Um, can you share with us some of the conversation that you had with Speaker McCarthy? And do you believe Democrats will help him keep his job? Well, good morning. Uh, good to be with you. It was a private conversation that we had. Uh, and we've had multiple private conversations over the last several mm -hmm. months uh, as we've been working our way through the 118th Congress. What I will say uh, to you is what I said to him, which is that we have a caucus meeting this morning. We'll have a family conversation about this issue relatively of first impression that hasn't been before the Congress in 110 years or so, uh, and then figure out where to go from there. We said from the very beginning of this Congress uh, that we were committed to finding common ground with the other side of the aisle whenever and wherever possible to make life better for everyday Americans, but yeah. that we would also yeah. push back against the extremism whenever necessary. And unfortunately, we've had to do that time and time again. So, Leader Jeffries, uh, there are many Democrats, as you know, who say, yeah, no, we're not going to help this speaker, the one who opened the floodgates of an impeachment inquiry and all the other legislation that you disapprove of. They say blow, broke a budget deal with uh, President Biden. Is it your sense that there are enough Democrats who might be willing to just say, hey, the, the House of Representatives is working. He's going to keep his job and to vote to support him? Well, that remains to be seen. We do know that the House of Representatives has largely been turned over to the most extreme elements uh, of the House Republican Conference, and that's not good for the American people. We'll have to see how that plays out in the context of this possible motion to vacate that may be, be before us either later on today or tomorrow. We do know that as Democrats, look, we came to Congress to fight to make life better for everyday Americans build a healthy economy, put people over politics. But the Republicans have been fighting each other from the very beginning. We are in the midst of a Republican civil war, and it is undermining the ability of the Congress to solve problems on behalf of hardworking taxpayers. And one way or the other, that's going to have to end. Not necessarily in the context of what may be before us this week. It's just have to end because it is not um, a productive situation for the country to find itself in with all of the challenges that we continue to work through to try to deal with uh, the problems facing everyday Americans. Well, and you know, when the House hits a Republican civil war that is hilariously being fought over an issue that Republicans were the worst ever at managing in the two years, they controlled all branches of government in 17 and 18. Biggest deficits ever, biggest debts ever, biggest budgets ever, biggest pork barrel spending ever. So that is uh, that is what's so funny about these this come to Jesus moment. I'm just wondering, though, uh, Congressman, you, you, you talk about pushing back against the extremism. I understand party one party not wanting to help another, and I understand people not trusting Kevin McCarthy because he didn't keep his word. Uh, but if there is a way forward, wouldn't it be? the best move for Congress and for the country uh, for Republicans and Democrats to roll over these most extreme members? Well, we've been working hard to come together uh, and to isolate the most extreme members of the House Republican Conference from the very beginning. We were able to do that uh, and coming together to avoid a catastrophic default that House Republicans were threatening to blow right. up America's economy. Uh, we provided the overwhelming majority of votes uh, to get that default crisis resolution over the finish line. And right. we did something unprecedented, uh, and we provided the votes so that the rule would pass so that we could get to the underlying bill. Uh, and we crossed over. We most recently were able to provide the votes necessary in order to meet the needs of the American people and pass a continuing resolution that would avoid a very dangerous government shutdown. Uh, so our track right. record has been very clear on this issue, and we will continue to lean in to bipartisanship as it relates to meeting the needs of the American people. This is a procedural right. issue that will be before us. And again, we have a caucus meeting. I care about what members of the caucus have to say. This is a, a, a vote of conscience in many ways. And I am interested in hearing what every single member of the House Democratic family has to say on this issue. And then we'll come to a collective decision at the end.
Yeah, but you, you, you would agree with me just looking at the situation. If, in fact, Republicans and Democrats come together to, to procedurally crush the five or six people that are now trying to hold up the entire House, that would be good for, for democracy, would it not? I think that what will be good for democracy is that we had a rule that was in place that didn't empower a single individual uh, to mm -hmm. basically discharge the speaker. In the two Congresses right. prior to this one, under Democrats, under the leadership of Speaker Pelosi, the rule was pretty clear. I understand, Only Congressman, we have that rule. I understand, right. I mean, I was there. In fact, we use that rule. I agree with you. We use that rule to run Newt Gingrich out of town. I, me and well, what I'm saying, a handful what I'm of saying, four Joe, or five other. So I, I, I get that, but we are where we are now. So moving yeah. forward, would it, would it be best for us to, to, to have the Republicans and Democrats come together and show these people they can't hold the entire legislative process hostage and help McCarthy get get his votes and continue for the, the, the next year. I think moving forward, we should come together around a set of institutional changes that foster and promote bipartisanship as opposed to giving one or two individuals the ability to hold the Congress and the country hostage. And I think those institutional changes would allow the Congress to work better to race toward the center as opposed to what has been happening over the last year, which is the extremes have been driving uh, the yes. train and so, unfortunately trying to drive America off a cliff. Are you saying the same thing? What do you mean? <laughs> it, it, it is what well, you're talking about rule changes that know, need to be put in place to, okay. to stop the extreme. I mean, I, the what, question what, what, is, I, I just wonder, though, you have one or two of these people that, again, holding the whole place up, and you've got hundreds of reporters following people that, you know, they've, they've got a caucus of three or four. Yeah. I mean, and this happens on the left side, too. I remember when, when you had some people coming in in 2018 that said, well, we're the progressive caucus, and Nancy Pelosi said, well, wait a second. I thought I was progressive. It's almost like reporters can't help themselves from following the bright, shiny objects, even if it's three or four out of 435. Well, that's true, Joe, but let's also take a step back uh, and recognize that the overwhelming majority of the House Republican Conference in the immediate aftermath of January 6 voted to decertify the election, lift up the big lie. The overwhelming majority yep. continues to promote Donald Trump as their candidate. The overwhelming majority uh, have voted or threatened the default supporting an illegitimate impeachment inquiry of President Biden when their own true witnesses that. have said, their own witnesses, that they're is no evidence to go after the president. So let's not just isolate this to a handful of individuals when you look at the totality of how House Republicans have conducted themselves in this Congress and in prior Congresses during the Trump era. Great Leader point. Jeffries, just a few moments ago, in fact, Speaker McCarthy told our friends at CNBC that Democrats, quote, have not asked for anything and I'm not going to provide anything. So he's saying he's not going to make any promises in exchange for votes, but that would seem to include Ukraine funding, which of course was missing from the continuing resolution that passed over the weekend. What assurances do you have that the, these House Republicans are going to revisit that issue? And in what sort of mechanism do you foresee this being a, a separate funding bill for Ukraine or part of the next CR? Because there's a lot of alarm in Europe and particularly in Kyiv that Ukraine funding was not part of the discussions this weekend. Yeah, I have raised this issue uh, with my Republican colleagues and counterparts, and it is very critical that we provide the Ukrainian people with the support necessary for them to co continue their courageous battle against Russia. And here's the, the question that will be before the Congress. Are we going to choose America's national security interests on the one hand or side with the pro-Putin caucus? in the Republican conference that internally is led by Marjorie Taylor Greene and externally is led by Donald Trump and Tucker Carlson. That undermines America's national security interests. And that's why it was so unfortunate uh, that at the insistence of House Republicans, we hunted on the Ukrainian funding issue. We need to get to that, not as a matter of weeks, but as a matter of days, because it's the right thing to do for America, but also for democracy and for freedom and truth and the Western world. Congressman, maybe you can help us out here. Earlier this year, Kevin McCarthy had a handshake deal 
with the President of the United States, which would have taken care of the nightmare that occurred last week, almost shutting down the government. He reneged on that deal with the President of the United States. Why would anyone trust or deal with Kevin McCarthy now, given the fact that he can't keep his word? Well, that certainly is one of the issues that I've heard from a lot of members of the House Democratic uh, Caucus, that there are real trust issues with the Republican leadership and with the Republicans overall, based on the fact that they, of course, negotiated an agreement with the President of the United States. It was passed into law. More than 300 members of the House supported it and then immediately turned around and broke the agreement that they themselves insisted that they negotiate, that we arrived at to avoid the type of drama that the American people have been experiencing. There was no need to take us down the road of a shutdown fight other than the fact that Republicans decided to break off from their own agreement that was in the best interest of the American people. That's unfortunate. Uh, and then, of course, we've dealt with a variety of different things, including coming into the session last month, and the first official act was to launch this illegitimate impeachment inquiry, presumably at the direction of the former twice-impeached insurrectionist-in-chief, Donald Trump, who continues to run large parts of the House Republican Conference. So these are all the challenges that I think we confront uh, as part of the chaos, the dysfunction, the extremism that we see on the other side of the aisle. It's not one or two individuals. It's the approach that they have taken to governing, and it is hurting the American people.